As the scene starts, we join Tom Holland's Peter Parker in the one place he feels like he can think, on top of his school. And we see how bruised, battered, bloodied and broken he is, staring out to the distance trying to wrap his head around what's just happened. He's just lost Aunt May, the only family he's ever had, and it was his fault. This truth is destroying him. MJ and Ned come over to him and embrace him, trying to comfort him as much as they can. You see Peter's expression break, letting out just a bit of the emotion that he stored up. And you have this beautiful moment of these three friends hugging each other in this prolonged shot. And Peter starts to cry, truly letting out the sadness and grief that has buried itself deep into his soul. Tom Holland does such an amazing job here. But as soon as MJ says that there are other people there with them, Peter Parker jumps into action. He's so on guard, so wary of anyone else. He doesn't know who these people are, but he instantly gets ready to fight them off. It's as if he trusts no one else except Ned and MJ. You get this beautiful, slow and thoughtful rendition of Tom Holland's Spider-Man theme as the two other Peters jump down from the rooftop. Hey, wait, wait, whoa! Tom's Peter Parker puts his hand out as a warning, but suddenly he notices who these guys are and it throws him off guard. Sorry. About me. Yeah, sorry. Toby's Peter instantly comes in with sorry. The first thing that Spider-Man says to himself is an apology, showing great care, trying to let Tom's Peter Parker know that he understands how it feels. And it's backed up by Andrew's Peter showing the same sentiment. But Tom's Peter Parker just instantly puts up his barriers, backing off, not letting them in. Wrapped up in his own grief, he doesn't believe that these two men could have gone through what he has. The weight of his guilt and pain is so great. I got some understanding of what it is. No, 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 please don't tell me that you know what I'm going through. Okay. It's such a little line here from Andrew's Peter, but it says so much. He knows exactly how Tom's Peter Parker is feeling because he has been there and the way he looks at him here, he understands completely. She's gone. It's all my fault. She died for nothing. So I'm gonna do what I should have done in the first place. And then Tom's Peter Parker shows how broken he really is. Gone is the optimistic boy we saw at the start of the film. The kid who went toe to toe with Doctor Strange just so he could give these people a chance of getting better. He gives up on that dream because he sees it as foolish. He sees that optimism he had, the dreamer that he was, and he blames Aunt May's death on that. If he had just listened to Doctor Strange and sent the villains back, she would still be alive. And despite the other two Peters trying to chime in, trying to get to him, he pushes them away, he gives up. It's not his problem anymore. And he is done trying to fix problems that aren't his. Peter, please don't. You don't belong here, either of you. So I'm sending you home. Well, those other guys are from your worlds, right? So you deal with it. If they die, if you kill them, that's on you. It's not my problem. I don't care anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I think this is Peter Parker completely giving up. I'm done with being Spider-Man. He doesn't want any more of his close friends to die because he was trying to help someone else. I'm really sorry that I dragged you into this, but you have to go home now. Good luck. Here, MJ shows that she knows what he needs. No words are said, but her eyes say it all. Tom's Peter Parker needs to hear the other two out. My Uncle Ben was killed. It was my fault. I lost... I lost Gwen, my, um... She was my MJ.
And then the other two Peter Parkers explain they have both lost people too and it was also their fault. I couldn't save her. I'm never going to be able to forgive myself for that. But I carried on, tried to, um, try to keep going, try to keep being the, uh, that friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, because I know that's what she would have wanted, but at some point I just, I stopped pulling my punches. I got rageful. I got bitter. I just don't want you to end up like, like me. The emotion that Andrew puts into these lines shows that his Peter still hasn't gotten over it. Toby is calm, collected, but Andrew's eyes are holding back tears, his voice quivering as he tries to explain what happened to him. There is guilt and regret and pain here. And you can actually see that this is getting through to Tom's Peter Parker. The night Ben died, I hunted down the man who I thought did it. I wanted him dead. I got what I wanted. It didn't make it better. It took me a long time to learn to get through that darkness. Through these lines, Toby brings a wisdom to this character. He's the oldest of the three, and there is a stark difference between him and Andrew's Peter. It's not that there isn't any emotion here. Ben's death still stings him, but you can see that he's come to terms with it. There is this reflective nature to his thoughts that shows that he's been through the darkness and come out the other side stronger. I want to kill him. I want to tear him apart. And that pain shows up again through Tom's Peter as he honestly says what he wants to do. Kill the Green Goblin. He's not holding back. But Aunt May's final words are still there, cutting through the noise. I can still hear her voice in my head. Even after she was hurt, she said to me that we did the right thing. She told me that with great power comes great responsibility. And the zoom into Toby's face here, the, the way that his face lights up, there is a hope in his eyes as he finishes the sentence. And this baffles Tom's Peter Parker. Like, how could he know what I was going to say? And then that little look between Andrew and Toby is everything. The thing that binds every Spider-Man together. Wait, what? How do you know that? Uncle Ben said it. The day he died. This moment defines them. It pushes them to be truly who they should be. Aunt May saying this put Tom's Peter Parker on the track of being Spider-Man, staying as Spider-Man even through the darkest moments. This one phrase connects all three of these characters and allows Tom's Peter Parker to open up and understand the other two. Maybe she didn't die for nothing, Peter. Maybe she didn't die for nothing is a hard line to digest, but truthful. Her death is what brought this phrase into Tom's Peter's life. And through that phrase, he will truly be able to stay Spider-Man. This scene works on so many levels, but I think the best part of it is the three different Peter Parkers and what they represent, the stages of life they are all in. Tom's Spider-Man is at his lowest he's ever been. He's lost Tony Stark, his mentor and father figure, and he has just lost Aunt May, his rock, his only family, and this time, it was his fault. His world seems to be imploding in on him. He is shutting himself off and descending into a place of rage and vengeance, tainted by the guilt and loss that he has suffered. He is about to cast off any responsibility and give up. He is on the precipice of becoming someone very different, someone very dark. Andrew Spider-Man is still trying to push through the lowest point in his life. He also lost Uncle Ben, and that was his fault. But losing Gwen affected him to a much greater degree, blaming himself for not being quick enough, not being able to save the woman he loved. He tried to carry on, but his rage and anger for the world started to affect him. He got bitter. He doesn't go into detail as to what happened and what he did. We are left to assume that. 
But when Spider-Man doesn't pull his punches, people die. And there is a real sense of regret of who he has become. And Tom's Peter Parker could very well turn out like him, and he's trying to prevent that. And then there is Toby Spider-Man. He has stood where the other two have stood, been through what they are going through, and he is here to help steer Tom's Peter in the right direction so that he doesn't become something he isn't supposed to be. Tom's Peter Parker is so close to giving into this darkness, something that would go completely against who he is, and it's right at this moment where he is closing himself off to everything, about to go at it alone, that the other two Peters swing in and they are exactly who he needs. They are the only ones who truly understand what he is going through, and it's the collective memory of Ben, Aunt May, Gwen, the loss, the grief that binds them. But more importantly, what really breaks down the walls, allows all of these Peter Parkers to connect, is the truth of what it means to be Spider-Man. The phrase that transcends the multiverse, the mantra that makes them who they are. With great power comes great responsibility. And through this, Tom's Peter Parker gets put back on course to being Spider-Man. Just an amazing scene. It gives me chills every time. I loved this film. Seeing Toby and Andrew back made me so happy. All three of them shine, and especially in this scene. That's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.